Okay, I think it's time now, so let me uh, get going. So you will have more, a little bit more time uh, if I uh, finish this earlier, so we can, we can have some questions. So I believe uh, here you are, and then all of you know that AI has invaded our daily life greatly. Some of our work has been affected or uh, improved or even taken away, I hope it's a good, uh, in a good way. So we are free to do more valuable and creative tasks. And it also gives us more time to be with family and to enjoy our life more. So early this year, uh, I was listening to Yen Seng Huang's uh, uh, keynote talk in the NVIDIA GTC event. And he called this is an iPhone moment another iPhone moment in human history. I felt a little bit uh, excitement, but also anxiety, because back, to, uh, back in 2007, I wasn't able to hop on the iPhone train when iPhone revolutionized our technology. But I'm thrilled to be here to be able to be uh, part of this new tech frontier. At the same time, I feel anxiety, because last year when GPT was released, in the form of ChatGPT, it quickly evolved from GPT-3 to uh, 3.4, uh, 3.5 to 4, and just uh, two weeks ago, we heard the GPT-4 uh, visual, it's uh, available. So this is a very short period of time and AI evolved so quickly. So this extremely fast pace uh, of advancement worries me because I definitely don't want to fall behind and suffer from the FOMO. Uh, a little bit about me, my name is Chris. I was a, a Drupal user group leader in, in Taiwan. Now in my day-to-day -day work, I support editors to produce content and connect with the readers. I have spent the last 15 years working with Drupal. In these years, I've been uh, part of diverse projects, including uh, fashion clothing brands, or uh, organization to celebrate the LGBT life in Taiwan, and even for a company to deliver the medical education. And currently, I'm at the company that uh, the term leads the in uh, industry in designing uh, electrical cargo bicycle and folding bicycle. So we generate extensive content for users to learn about our products, our uh, associ uh, accessories, and how to use our, our products more, and, but more importantly, how to make our global environment more sustainable. Behind every piece of content, so this is the topic we are, we are going to talk about, how AI can uh, assist our content. Uh, behind every piece of content, there's a lot of work uh, goes unnoticed. Creating content uh, isn't just about writing. So it involves uh, multiple drafts, polishing, and also extensive uh, reviews before we hit the publish. And so success isn't just about the great content. It's also about knowing our uh, target audience, the, the market, and also what's the strategy of the brand. Given our global reach, uh, localization is very important because we translate our content for 40 different markets, and including um, 17 regional language variants. So ensuring uh, that the content resonates uh, locally is very important. So this is a team effort involving all our, uh, the team and also our local uh, distributors. So I started to think about what AI can do to help align with our search, uh, strategies. But some people say AI can do uh, many things and sometimes do better than us. But technically, uh, technically speaking, there are many AI models, right? So uh, the one we are constantly talking about is the large language models, or as known as the LLMS. But LLMS is just a fraction of the AI landscape. So there are still other models like uh, that models can interpret spoken language into another dialect. And there are also visual models. The visual models can probably uh, see what we can see 
and what human want to see or some, something even human don't see. For example, uh, the mod, there are mod, uh, medical AIs that can diagnose symptoms, predict potential diseases, or even recommend treatments. So today we are focused on the LMS here and integrate into the Drupal. So understanding the, the AI capability you are using, I think that's the key. So in a course that I, I learned from the uh, deep learning AI, I don't know if you know the website, it's uh, hosted with Andrew N. And the, the, the initial course about the engineering the prompt, I learned there are four major uh, primary functions. So expand, summarize, transform, and inference. Uh, expand is mostly we use uh, to generate content. So AI can craft paragraphs, titles, even entire books for us. Summarize, the ability can distill long form content into a brief summary text while preserving the essential information for us. Transform, the, cap uh, the capability can help us to encompass uh, translation or format com uh, commercial, uh, conversions and also tone adjustments. Whether it is translating languages or converting markdown into HTML or into different XML format or simplifying the scientific articles into a content that even 60 year old children can understand. That's the ability of a transform. The last one, inference, I think this is very important one. So AI can perform deep content analysis to uncover the hidden patterns and insights, particularly the, for the user-generated content. So this will st streamline the workflow, allowing for like quicker and more accurate re response, uh, aiding our, for example, if a user submit the uh, inquiries to you, you can use this ability to, uh, to detect what's the uh, sentiment in, in the content. So as you venture into the, the world of AI, I think keep these four major things in mind will not only uh, enhance your confidence if you are a, de a developer, but will also empower you to unlock the full potential of, of the LLMS in your projects. So let's break down a typical copy of uh, the, uh, the typical copy creation workflow. It usually started from content, content draft, following by multiple reviews, and then uh, final approvals. If your website is uh, multilingual, then translation. Then meta tag and SEO are written, and at the, at the last, you may want to campaign, uh, you want to do some campaign activities such as email blasting or a social media post. So I, today I may not have all the answers for how to into, uh, incorporate AI in the system, but I will have the mixed uh, answers with the conceptual ideas and what's the, the Drupal modules that help us to, to do in, in the content editing process. And also three uh, modules that I have been contribute and in, into our uh, project in the last couple of months. Uh, before we get into the main topic, I, I want to ask, would you feel uh, that, a, are you convinced that AI can undoubtedly enhance our, or boost our productivity? All right, that's a good, good, good number. So, but let's, let's see some, some uh, study and research then. So, uh, the, Nielsen Norman Group, they just reported in, in July, says uh, the AI can enhance the, the productivity by 66 in average. Uh, in the other hand, I also see it's possible that uh, in a Japanese researcher says watching the cat video may also boost the productivity, <laughs> right? So which one do you choose, cat video or AI? Both? Both? Yeah, me too. So. 
So this is, I, I work in remotely, so usually have a cat on me while I'm maybe working with the open AI, All right? Okay, let's come back to the topic. So first step, uh, content drafting. The first stage, uh, usually we will draft a copy, whether it is an article or a title or a summary maybe. AI can help us by generating the initial draft. Uh, I want to say initial draft, not the whole, not the whole copy. And we, we can later refine the draft to save some time. There is already an open AI module, maybe you already know. It has multiple kinds of AI functions uh, and sub-modules that you can, you can exper experiment in your site. So one of the integration is for CK editor integration. It has multiple uh, solutions embedded in, in the CK5 uh, to complete the tags or adjusting the tone or do the summarize or even translate. But uh, this is only for experimental, to, uh, in my opinion, because I, if you dive into the code, its prompt is very general. So it, it has the system, uh, the system prompt, and then combine the, the prompt with your text input in, in the CK editor. So, and there's no place for you to change the, the prompt. So this is not ideal in the practical situation. And also beware, uh, there might be something you don't expect it. For example, I ask the, I use the tool to ask for a five paragraph about quantum science, but it returns the, the big chunk of the content with numbering in every sections. Yeah, so I couldn't even ask the, 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 the plugin to general uh, uh, HTML content for me, for example, adding an image or adding a list, because it is already in the HTML, uh, <coughs> HTML editor, and unless we can do that in the, the, in the source mode, that won't, won't work. Also be cautious, if, because there is a limitation of the, the, the tokens that you can request to open AI. If you ex exceed the, the number, it will just return the error message into your editor. Right, so uh, keep in mind, this is still worse to experiment with the tool, but if you are going to use this kind of tool, I suggest you cust either customize the, the module or uh, do some updates or create your own module. So I actually made uh, the first uh, my, my own module to, you, to implement the open AI. This is called uh, generative summary. It is simply adding a generate summary bottom next to the summary uh, input field for the long text format uh, with the summary. So the, the module will, get, will gather all the text you, you input in the body and then create a summary for you. So there is a, a global settings for the prompt and the, the, the tokens you can use. You can also uh, localize the prompt for each uh, long text field because I believe you have different uh, content type with different purpose, so you might need a different, different prompt. So with just one click, you can generate the, the summary text for me. But when I, when I create these, I think there's one thing very interesting I want to share because uh, at the very beginning, I went with a zero shot approach, asking the AI to produce a 200 characters summary. When I got the, the first response was, on, was uh, 500 characters with two paragraphs, which is much more than I want. I further request the number of sentences and then explicit uh, asking for the, the different number of characters, it doesn't really help. At the end, I decided to assign a persona to the AI. So I hypnotized the, the AI saying, you are a senior and mature digital media editor who knows how to write an attractive summary and exact 
uh, extract the, the, the most representative, uh, representative info from the article. Just like that, it worked. So I can later uh, compose a user, user prompt to request a, a, a number of sentence and the less, uh, the number of the, the, the text for the summary. So you will be able to change that if you will need more or longer uh, summary in the, for your content. So once the content is drafted, the next step is reviewing, right? So it includes like correcting typos, checking the tone, or ensure the content uh, engage to your target audience. The OpenAI module uh, that I just mentioned, it has a content tool sub-module. It adds some toolbox next to the ed of note editing form. It provides some like uh, uh, changing the tone of the text or the, the translate uh, uh, summary and then also uh, provide some uh, taxonomy keywords. But I checked the, the prompt. It was exactly the same that we just saw for the CK editor. So it, it, doesn't, it still doesn't have any, any customization, uh, customization, customization you, can, you can use, but it is still, still a good start. You can, you can try that. So I went the other different angle because I, I, I thought maybe when the, our editor create a content, we can provide some different tools to help them to review whether the content is good for the, the target audience or not. So I thought about the, uh, the idea of AI readability tool. This is just a conceptual idea. So let me expand the, the steps. Um, at the beginning, we, AI has the inference uh, ability. So we can use AI and then tell the AI what's the predefined persona and that AI to, uh, to uh, exercise its inference ability to provide us some measurements or the score, how much it matches to, your, uh, to our uh, target audience or even get some suggestion from AI. So that is kind of a, a qualitative measure, right? But in the other end, we can also combine some algorithm to get more uh, quantitative measures. For example, uh, there's uh, F Flash Kincaid read, uh, reading, easy, uh, reading, reading ease and Flash Kincaid grade level Majors, they are algorithm, so we can use that to uh, to c calculate some scores to detect what the the readability of our content. This this comprehensive approach combined these quant uh, quantitative and qualitative measures, it will not only set a consistent baseline for readability, but also ensure that our content can effectively uh, reaches to it, its uh, intended target audience. The other idea is about uh, proofreading. So various style goes, the, 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 uh, various guidelines exist. Uh, maybe the, the most famous one is the AP style book or others like APA or AMA. These guides will promote the consistency across the different mediums. So it could also help us to check the spelling uh, the, the, the proofreading can also help us check the <clears throat> spelling in different language variations. So I was working in the scientific inst institute. There are talents coming from all over the world, and we all communicate in English. But when we publish the content for the institute, we have to uh, decide what's the, the major tone or uh, system we want, to, we want to publish our content. Either it is European spelling or US spelling or which guideline we want to use. Once it's de determined, the, the reviewer usually need to make sure the publication are consistent. So AI can definitely support us to uh, correct those, those things and help us to, to make sure the spelling and styles are consistent. If you, your website is multilingual, then the translation becomes an essential step. When we hear machine translation before, how many of you have negative impressions? 
Yeah, I, I believe so, I, I'm too. So whenever, whenever people say, let's create content and then let's go, go to Google Translate, I say no, yeah. But however, the, the machine translation is still continuously evolving and improving. I, you, you probably know there are something better than Google Translation already, right? And my former colleague, translator, in the communication and PR have begun using DeepL for, the, for drafting the uh, translation. When we request the, the content translation uh, <clears throat> for our website, they ask us, you can, you can use the DPL to, to make the first draft because they, they find it, it's com uh, the, the DPL will complete like 80% of the work. So allowing them to focus on the nuance, for example, the tone or the spe uh, specialized terminology, and they can fix that later and it saves a lot of time for them. So translation is also part of AI ability of transformation. GPT model exhibit a very strong capability in translation. So this is based on some, some study I, I, I searched from Handy. This is part of the uh, Microsoft uh, research team, I, I believe. So in their study, it, uh, it finds the GPT translation outperformed the natural machine translator in, from uh, the Microsoft they, they, they built according to the, this study. So even, even with a zero shot approach, a zero shot means you just like, you ask one question in ChatGPT without give any, any con context or try to guide the, the, the ChatGPT response. That's kind of a zero shot. You ask one question, you get the answer. So for translation, I, I, I say, uh, translate the bicycle to, to French, and then it returns vowel. So that's the zero shot. So in this study, it finds the zero shot translation approach also shows very impressive performance for high resource language. High resource language means the most, uh, the material in this training model. For example, in here, you can see uh, from, from English to, to, to Germany, from English to Czech, or uh, to Russian or France in, in this study. So this is, even with GPT 3.5, it's already very useful. So for our website, with 17 major language categories for 40 different countries on our site, maintaining the linguistic uh, diversity is very, uh, very important. So each country may feature one or multiple language variations. For example, Belgium, we have three uh, languages for Belgium. And when we roll out our products, articles, uh, timely translation is very crucial. So to accelerate the process, uh, I was trying to think what can we, can we do to make a trans, uh, translation draft instead of asking our local distributor to translate the content from scratch. So for a short sentence, UI element, or just the title, I create a module called uh, OpenAI Translation Toolbox. So this toolbox is also very simple. It detects all the enabled la uh, language in your website. And you can choose what language you want to allow the editor to, 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 to translate. And then the editors can pick up uh, different languages and then input the <coughs> original sentence for translation. After they submit it, they will get the list for every language and then have a copy and, uh, copy and paste link on, on the end. So it, it will help, help them to quickly get the, the initial draft before they, they send to the local distributor for the translation and review. So interesting thing is uh, these will also take care of some like local variants, uh, like the, the German between uh, Germany and Swiss German or European English versus American English. Talking about the traditional content translation, it's usually a cumbersome process. 
So previously, when we do the translation for each language, we will send the English text stripped of HTML already to our local sales to translate. While this made the text easier to translate, and it is challenging when we need to merge the text back to the HTML. So it is fortunate if we can find one translator, the local translator, who is comfortable to edit in the content in the HTML or WYSIWYG directly, but for 40 different languages, it's not feasible at all. So, and then although I just mentioned DPL, DPL can translate 31 different languages, but it doesn't cover the different uh, language variations, like the, the, the French in different world, uh, in different country, or Spanish in, in, in different country. But AI is, has trained for that, and then it sometimes can, can create this kind of a, a local translation if we provide the, the, the enough context. For example, the country and the language code, it can do better than the DPL. And also, DPL cannot process the HTML either. So uh, with OpenAI, we find it is very useful because in this example, we are using uh, the translation management uh, module. The, the core module is uh, called TMGNT with the OpenAI translator, also an extension for the TMGNT. So this, mo this module, will, this on the right, this is a translation from uh, OpenAI. And it keeps the HTML and then translate content in here with all the, the links and the, the list that you can see. So I think this, uh, we, in, in the last couple of months, I, I contribute to this module uh, for the AI translator uh, more to make it more extensive for longer HTML because uh, if it is article, usually it is too long. So we have to, to break it down into chunks in order to, in order to get the, the right uh, translation. And with the TMGNT module, it is also very helpful to create a translation draft before we actually publish or save into a node. So uh, our editor will be able to see how many uh, drafts uh, is already for different language. Uh, if, you, if you don't see the, the green check here, that means the content haven't been saved uh, as, a, as a node yet, but it has a draft uh, inside of this module. So we are now, let me see this image. Okay. We are now gradually integrate the open edge translator into our existing workflow. So on the left, uh, it, it is the original process. Uh, we need to segment our attacks and then send to the uh, local distributor and then uh, it takes about roughly about three weeks to finish the whole process before we can publish the content for the, uh, with the older translation. In the center, it is the, the current process, although it is, it is longer, but in the, the first block here, so we use this uh, translator to provide uh, initial draft for the local distributor to review and then modify from it. So it saves our time, so approximately uh, it reduced the whole, whole week. So it, now it is like more, or, more or less about two weeks to finalize the, the translation. So our ideal goal is on the, on the right to be able to eliminate, the, skip the whole process of these. So this part will be gone because if we invite the, the distributors, they invite them to the system and then use the AI to generate the, the first draft from themselves, they will be able to directly um, modify and then create the, the translation draft in the system. So it will save us time, save our editors time to communicate with them. So in the, maybe in the ideal uh, situation, we can uh, further uh, eliminate the process into one week, hopefully. So as we are doing 
the, the current process, we also ask the feedback from our local distributors and translators and how do they feel about uh, the time and qualities. I don't, I don't want to mention all the, all the points, but just two. One is they also find 80% uh, satisfactory, which matches what I, I, I mentioned. Our previous translator also says 80% uh, from the machine translation is quite useful. And there's one comment I want to especially mention. There's maybe this is from Swiss German. So it says, it's very cute. Uh, there was a Swiss German dialect translated in the text. So with the traditional translation, I, I, I don't know how would it be possible for this happens. So after the content is finalized, the next focus it will be uh, post-creation activities for SEO. And there, I think the, the module of OpenAI is already helpful. And I, I think this process, you can also use the chat GPT to help you to generate uh, the attractive titles for you or extract some keywords for you to use for SEO keywords or uh, taxonomy if, if you want to use to link different articles. So th this is already uh, a sub-module under the OpenAI. So this is, uh, if you later you, you can check the, the slides, it, it especially mentioned creating the SEO friendly title for this page based on the content. So if you, do you want to create your module, you can definitely uh, use this module as an example and customize your own. And the last step is cam about campaigning and, and social media post. So here I also have some just con conceptual ideas. So since ChatGPT can mimic the tone and craft the uh, engaging text, even with emoji, and it also understand the various restriction for different social media platforms, for example, Twitter or X. Yeah, right now, they, they have limitation of the, the characters. So the chat GPT seems also know about it. So simply input your content and ask the AI to generate a, a post. It will strategically include the emoji and hashtag while staying with the correct limit. So. If you are going to make these uh, with a Drupal module, I don't think that's a huge problem, right? It is very easy. So since I mentioned the AI readability toolbox that can utilize the predefined persona, I may further uh, integrate that features, uh, the, the generate the social media posts into this one because we will be able to target different audience and create diverse of social posts or email campaign uh, when we are using, when we are doing the uh, campaign activities. So that's all about editing. And I, this, these two are a little bit out of uh, Drupal, but I think it is also helpful for the editing process. The first one uh, I was, creating a semantic uh, search function using GPT. Because for article and similar content, many websites, we, we have the related content or things you like sections, right? And usually in the traditional way, we use the relation database system. So the related content is usually typically uh, determined using the score, calculated with the keywords and the field weight, and also the keywords expanded uh, to which it broadened the search parameters. But LLM, however, takes a different approach by identifying relevance through the vector space, which is the, the way AI understand the, the relevance and knowledge. So it will offer more sem uh, semantic semantically align with the, the results similar to human reasoning. So I build this tool. So I use a, a training data from Japanese, uh, Japanese 
blog of our, our own Japanese website. And I can use that and uh, I request a question, find the re relevant test write events using English and it returns the Japanese text for me. It finds the content for me. So it doesn't matter what language I request, I ask. The, the AI model can still find the answer for me. So I, I don't think this is even possible to use the, the, just the traditional search engine. So since we have this feature, I further make this as a, a chatbot, as kind of a supporting to find our knowledge. So this is an example. So again, the, the content was just in, in Japanese. And I, I wrote a, a, a prompt, like, a, like, go, like, like communicate with ChatGPT and show me what is the latest model and also ask the model to re return the information with a, a, a very specific format and then what's the label I want to see. And the content returns in English. So it will be able to help uh, our service team or sales team or even our di local distributor to find the information at their own language. So I think this will also be help very helpful for our editors and the, the distributors to find the, the information from our side and further uh, uh, to help, help the communication with our client, uh, with our customers. All right, so this is an, so there are so many possibilities to enhance the workflow and experience of editing with OpenAI. As we navigate the AI renaissance, the focus is not just about adopting the new tool, but also how to master and redefine the media content creation. So ChatGPT is no doubt a killer app uh, in, this, in this trend. And we can further bring, it, the, bring the ability into Drupal without caution. And it will streamline the editing experience. By integrating the LLM with the traditional algorithm in a chained uh, process. So we are not only getting the benefit of AI, but also mitigating the uh, limitations such as uh, the well-known hallucination from the, from the AI. So as a result, we can produce more reliable content. I also benefit a, a lot from the, the GPT. So just to be honest, I when I create those modules, I use a lot of uh, maybe GPT or Copilot to help me because I will be able to focus on the things I enjoy the most and let the AI to take care of the, the code, methodology, and standards for me. So this will perfectly align with our goal and navigate this uh, current wave of, of technology advancement. So there's also more research uh, showing the evidence that AI can improve our if, uh, efficiency work. While some people fear the rise of AI, I'm confident that we definitely we can guide it and apply our deep knowledge and then fine tune the, the AI model in the future. So don't fear with it. And if you feel fear with the generation or generative AI, use the other uh, abilities, uh, summarize or in inference, that will be very helpful. So let's embrace the, the AI and thank you for joining the session. I'm available for questions. So if I get you right, um, step one for you using AI uh, in a generative sense or useful sense uh, for our websites mm -hmm. is mastering the prompt. So we somehow, like layer one, we create a persona for the AI, which is always the basement for mm -hmm. everything it generates in a special context. And afterwards, we somehow need to prompt it really, really good so that we get a solution. Um, is there any mythology that you were engaging this issue? Like, was it just try and error? Or um, is there something um, that you say, um, yeah, there's like a guideline or, mm. or a good uh, piece of content on how to prompt AI very good? Uh, try and error, I think that most of people will start. But um, I encourage everyone to think about how to engineer the prompt. 
So there are already many of studies. So like I mentioned, the zero, zero shot is just one term for those kind of try and error. And there are like uh, two shots or, or call of thought, a uh, chain of thought. How can you uh, guide the, the AI to think about uh, how to generate the content? For example, in the, the translation toolbox, I don't just use the, the, the zero shot. I also provide an example, how should you provide the, the information for me? Otherwise, I couldn't process the, uh, the result uh, output from AI because I asked specifically return the, in the JSON format with some, some label and the, the, the values that I want. If I don't engineer the, the prompt well, it will be uh, return different things every time. Yeah, so I, I believe this is the, also the same thing for uh, even just for uh, content generation. Thank you, very interesting presentation. Uh, did you have any figures of actually how much the performance of the whole cycle has been boosted? Did you get like a 66% uh, performance boost as was mentioned in the study? Yeah. Um, because we have a little uh, feedback from the, from the translator. So the most val uh, we can evaluate is from the, the translation process. And the last time we tried using this way, I said we already uh, shorten the the amount of time by one week, and from the, all the comments from the distributor, they say it definitely saves their time. But of course, there are some some others saying, "Oh, we still have to uh, refresh everything because it's not it's too much literal. We need to refresh." But still, at the very beginning, they say it's a good start. Yeah, so they don't have to write from scratch. So I, I couldn't tell like how, exactly how, may, how many percentage has been improved. But I, said, I would say it has been improved. And we will further get more feedback uh, about like statistically like how much. Yeah, thank you, makes sense. So another question. Uh, when it comes to search, you obviously have to train the, the model with your own data. Um, was this also like an uh, open, AI, AI, open AI technology you used, and did you do it on your own server, or did you use their service? Okay, uh, this is not, uh, to do the search, you don't need to uh, fine tune or train the AI model. This is using uh, embedding, which is kind of a data for AI to, to process. And the data is stored in the, kind of, in the way I just mentioned the, the vector space. So it has like three or four dimensions with a lot of numbers for AI to calculate the relevance of each content. And the solution I, I was using, I can use OpenAI, uh, I, I need to use a GPT to process the, the, the feedback. But in order to get the relevance content, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't need open AI service at all. Yeah. I don't think I get it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the exercise. All right, thanks. Uh, I just want to say I, I, I think this is all fantastic. I, I like it, especially the, the translation stuff, and then the rest of it's really cool. I'm just wondering, when are you going to do a, uh, a, a Dolly um, integration? I'd like, uh, I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question. So uh, our team, I think we are very uh, proud of our own uh, media creation and art. So I don't see there's a, a, a near future that we will implement Dolly in our content because we use very authentic content and we hire, still hire very good quality uh, P, uh, PR firm to help us to shoot all the video and, and, and content. You could still do like, uh, like uh, automatic alt text generation or, or something like that. I guess there are already probably mm -hmm. solutions for that, the one though. Yeah, I think I, I will need to push uh, push more 
because this is the first trial, because I, I just joined the, the company for less than uh, six months, and I tried to bring this idea, and they have some, some concerns about the security. So in this example, uh, we are not using OpenAI company's so, so, uh, service. We are instead using the Azure to, to have the separated model. Thanks. Um, I want to come back to the previous question to make sure I, I understand. Yeah. Um, did you have all your content in, in a vector database and you can access that with basically any LLM or is, is that not how it works? Oh, you mean this, this yeah. search result? I can, I can later show you my, my, my repository and then let me explain the process. The first, I grab all, all the blog, op, uh, blog posts from the, the Google blog post service, and then transfer those XML into, uh, into plain text. And then there is a, I think there is a, a AI model, oh yeah, at the beginning I used the AI model to create the embedding. I think that's the, maybe the DaVinci or other, I, I couldn't remember. And then it creates a file. The file could be uh, saved locally or using uh, AI database service, for example, PyCon, it is more a uh, famous one. So you save it there, so it is considered as a, a database. So then you can request uh, using your pr parameter and the, the database will return the relative content uh, from their ID and then, because we have the, all the text here, uh, it, it, like a chunk of text and there's ID, so you will return which ID is more close to your uh, query parameters. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, that exercise is actually from uh, OpenAI tutorial. I, I, can, I can let you know what the tutorial is so you can try on your machine as well. Any other questions? No, and then thank you for joining me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>